I'm so glad you're here. As always, oops, be the change you wish to see in the world, right? Well, I don't know where my graphic, oh, here's my graphic. Yay, Gandhi would say that. But it's about being good and doing good and the dove symbolizes peace. Well, I'm so glad everyone could be with me today because today we're gonna talk about an exciting basic scientific principle called states of matter. What are states of matter? States of matter are basically the way things that you can't really see with the naked eye are constantly vibrating and they're changing their matter constantly. And um, you can have uh, water as a rock or ice, and it's in solid state. What does that mean? Well, there's atoms and molecules, and um, there's bonds between the different matter, and they have different names. Scientists use fancy names for the way these uh, molecules bond together and whether their bonds are strong or not. And they have the term solid, liquid, or gas, or plasma, for the different states that the molecules or matter. Very often it's chemicals, but the chemicals are made up of molecules, and everything is made up of atoms. I don't know if I have atoms in here. Let me put atoms in here, okay? So atoms are um, are actually, let's look at some images. That helps you see what it is. Now they actually have, they talk about the nucleus, the proton, the electron, and there's positive and negative charges. Um, see P and N, that's positive and negative. There's constant vibration within things you can't see it with the naked eye. It's it's on a microscopic level. And there's things in here that they're not including, which are quarks. But the basic thing with the atoms are these are molecules that are so tiny, you can't see them with the naked eye, and they're constantly moving. And um, so it's at a very small level. and. What happens with these different bonds is they're either closer together or f further apart, and scientists have special ways to show them. Now, not to get too far ahead, but sometimes uh, something can change its state of matter and not come back to the state it was before. And that's called uh, a process in biochemistry called denaturization, denaturing. So when you fry an egg, it's when you crack open an egg, it's liquidy. When you heat it up and you cook it, it becomes denatured. The bonds in it get thicker and they stick together. There's other things that when you heat them up, they melt and they don't get as solid, but they can go from form to form. But with the states of matter, sometimes they can't go back to the form they were. Now, this is where inorganic versus organic compounds come in. Now, when you take biology and some classes, they will talk about uh, chemical compounds that contain carbon and different oxides. There's over 4 million organic compounds in our world. And um, the thing about organic versus inorganic is um, when you're changing your states of matter, you will notice, um, have you heard of fossil fuels? Have you heard of oil or coal? Um, the oil is liquid, right? Uh, okay, but what it is is it's an organic chemical, and the reason it's considered organic is because they go under the ground or under the water and they dig in there. But what it's made up of is it's from dinosaurs 
or uh, living, it's from old plant matter. And um, it helps give us energy, but, um, well, these aren't the best pictures. Here's a good picture. Fossil fuels, you see peat moss and all these other things under the ground over time and pressure. The oils and stuff come out of the plants and they form pockets way under the ground or under water. And um, they call them fossil fuels because they're made up, a lot of them were made not just from um, uh, coal, but they were made from dinosaurs. And um, they make plastics and stuff like that from that. And it's all based on changing states of matter. There's a thing called m maximum entropy. And the states of matter are always going toward maximum entropy. Maximum entropy. Whoops, I spelled it wrong. Um, let's do an image. It's easier to see stuff in images. It, it's where stuff goes from low energy to high energy and then back to it's basically decaying so um, anyhow it's it's a thermodynamic thing uh, what you need to know for the states of matter is you need to know that matter is made up of really tiny molecules here's like a water molecule hydrogen hydrogen and oxygen and there's different formulas depending on what the chemical is and they have a way of writing that mathematical formulas that they figure that out with. Those scientists do. And when something is um, uh, in a state of matter where it's turning, um, it's changing and it can't go back and it's uh, organic. Uh, remember we talked about inorganic and organic molecules? Okay. So it's very complicated, but the basic theories that we start with are the theories of the states of matter from the atoms. You can't always see the, um, the um, is this states of matter? No, this is about the water. The water is going through different states of matter, liquid, solid. Um, and uh, did I? Um, okay. Well, science is a lot of fun. And it's not that hard if you just kind of go over it. And it can get kind of tricky because sometimes the teachers want you to memorize all this stuff. And it's really not that hard. You just go over it a couple of times, try to memorize this stuff. And it's, it's actually got fun stuff like experiments. I love experiments. And cooking is almost like science. So remember your states of matter. And for the simplest class, maybe in grade school, you'll be talking solid, liquid, gas, but then you're going to be talking about plasma as well. The bonds are further apart or closer together. They're stronger or weaker bonds, depending on the form it's in. The stronger bonds, uh, they have different names for the kinds of bonds. They might not ask you to memorize that till you're till later. But here's some different bond theories, and um, they use uh, microscopes to see this. This is how they learned about it. They looked under microscopes, but first they looked under um, the earlier types of microscopes, and then they developed these fabulous microscopes that can look even smaller called electron microscopes. And this is how we know this. Sometimes you, um, sometimes you just have to trust things that you can't see with your naked eye. But if you really want to see it, there's electron microscopes that see the really tiny, tiny, tiny things. And then there's these kinds that they often have in schools. And what's really cool is if you look under a microscope at like a plant and the plant's alive, and you go like a hundred times, you can actually see the plant move, the, the chlorophyll moving around in the plant. It looks like a little racetrack. It's so cool. And you know, you know, when you don't even think about it, 
That stuff is made up of atoms, and they're moving all the time, but you can't see it. They're vibrating, and they're held together by these bonds. And, and matter is always changing, and very often there's, a, there's different theories and um, explanations for how these things uh, get in different states. And some stuff is buried under the ground, like oil that we use for energy. There's energy in it that we can use to light things and everything. So, states of matter is a very basic theory about how matter changes. And cooking is really a good way to have fun with experiments on states of matter because when you cook, it changes the way the state of matter is. I'm gonna, uh, I'm trying to keep these so that I can put the links below, but I wanted you to see, I wanted to stop on the states of matter image. But if you have any questions, just put them in the box below. And I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And remember, science is fun on. -on. And let me put my big, quick thank you up. I like to put that up every time. Where's my thank you? Well, I'm just going to say thank you this time. Take care. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good day.